In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Madison crochet motif, how to join it in a variety of ways, and how to use it in a variety of ways also. So to begin with, we have to make our first motif. And let's look at the chart first so I can show you how to read it as well. So this chart here is for the Madison motif. It starts with a chain six and slip stitch to join to the sixth chain from your hook. Then row round one begins with a chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one, then double crochet in the ring chain one 11 times, slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain four to count as the double crochet portion of it, and that ends round one. At the end of round one, you should have 12 chain one spaces. Okay, so we're going to start by making our first motif. And obviously, when you're making your first motif, there's nothing to join it to yet. So we will just simply make the first motif. Start with the chain six. And slip stitch to the sixth chain from our hook to form a ring. Chain four which counts as our first double crochet, chain one, then double crochet in the ring, yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on your hook, chain one. You wanna repeat this all the way around until we have a total of 12 double crochets and 12 chain one spaces, keeping in mind that that beginning chain four counted as our first double crochet, chain one. At the end of the last repeat, you want to slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain four. And this is what your work should look like at the end of round one. You should have 12 chain one spaces. Round two begins with slip stitching into the first chain one space. Chain three and two double crochet cluster in that chain one space counts as our first three double crochet cluster. The repeat for this round is chain three three double crochet cluster in the next chain one space. You want to repeat that all the way around, then chain three and slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. Round two begins with slip stitching into the first chain one space, chain three, and two double crochet cluster in that same space. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. Chain three and double, two double crochet cluster together combined to be the equivalent of our first three double crochet cluster for this round. And our repeat is chain three and three double crochet cluster in the next chain one space. So three double crochet cluster is yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all four loops on our hook. Our repeat for this round is chain three and three double crochet cluster in the next chain one space. And you want to repeat this all the way around.
the end of the last repeat, it's chain three, and slip stitch to the first stitch at the beginning of the round to join. Because the chain three and two double crochet cluster counted as components together to be the equivalent of our first three double crochet cluster, I like to slip stitch into the top of the cluster stitch and not in the top of the chain three when that's the case. And this is what your work should look like at the end of round two. You should have 12 chain three spaces. Round three begins with slip stitching into the first chain three space, chain one, and double crochet in that same chain three space. Chain five, single crochet in the next chain three space. Then five double crochet, chain five, five double crochet, all in the next chain three space. Single crochet in the next chain three space, chain five, and single crochet in the next chain three space. You wanna repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last double crochet, you slip stitch to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join and fasten off. Let's do that with our yarn now. Round three begins with a slip stitch into the first chain three space, chain one, and single crochet in that same space, chain five, and single crochet in the next chain three space. In the next chain three space, we're going to work five double crochets, chain five and five double crochets. Our repeat for this round is single crochet in the next chain three space, chain five, single crochet in the next chain three space, then five double crochet, chain five, five double crochet in the next chain three space, and you want to repeat this all the way around. At the end of the last repeat, you want to slip stitch to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join and fasten off. And this is what your work should look like at the end of your first Madison motif. Next, I'll show you how we join them on one side. Here are two finished motifs. And first I wanna show you what we're going to be doing before we actually do it. So we have a chain five space in the corners and we have a chain five space on the sides and we have a chain five space in the corners. What we're going to be doing on our joining rounds is replacing these chain fives with chain five joins, meaning we're going to chain two, slip stitch, chain two, and then continue on in pattern. Chain two, slip stitch, chain two, continue on in pattern. Chain two, slip stitch, chain two, and continue on in pattern. That chain two, slip stitch, chain two is a chain five join being the equivalent of a chain five space. So now let me show you how to join one. Okay, so I've got a finished motif here, and I have a motif here where I worked rounds one and two already, and I got started on round three, and I'm at the point where I would normally do a ch my first chain five space in the corner of the five double, chain five, five double. So I'm going to replace that with a chain five join and join it to this corner right here. So it's chain two, slip stitch into the adjacent chain five space, chain two, okay, whoops. I'm gonna set it down so you can see where we are. 
right there. And then we're going to come back to our working motif and continue on in pattern. So we're going to finish up that corner with five more double crochets. Okay, next in this pattern is single crochet in the next chain three space. Next is a chain five. We're going to repeat it, replace it with a joining chain five. So chain two, set our work down again, make sure we join in the right place. We're going to slip stitch into this next chain five space to join. Chain two, so that chain two slip stitch chain two counts as our chain five space and then single crochet in the next chain three space. Next is the five double crochet chain five, five double crochet corner. So we'll work our five double crochets. Then a chain five join, chain two, set our work down again, make sure we join in the correct place, slip stitch into this adjacent chain five space. Chain two, and then continue on in our established pattern to, con to complete round three of the Madison motif. So it's just regular chain fives now, not chain five joins. We're only using chain five joins when we're actually joining something. And we'll slip stitch to join to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round, just like we did on the first motif. And we will continue doing that for all the motifs as well. So this is what your work should look like when you have two motifs joined along one side. I always like to weave in my ends as I go, and it's especially important when you're working with motifs because you have two ends to weave in for each motif, and it can get kind of out of control if you don't uh, get a hold of it. So the best way for me is to just weave them in as I go. And when you're weaving in your loose ends, you want to work on the back side of the work whenever possible and work back and forth at least in three directions before cutting your tail. And that's the best way to get a really secure finish. You know, depending on whether you're wanting to keep this as an heirloom for a very long time or wanting to give it as a gift, you want to make sure that these ends don't pop out. And the best way to do that is by taking your time and making sure that you work back and forth multiple times in multiple directions to get a good solid fit. Okay, I now have another motif worked through round two and ready to join on one side to one of these motifs here. We're going to do a one-sided join just like we did on the previous motif by replacing my chain fives with chain five joins. When it comes to corners like this, sometimes it's better to actually slip stitch into the center chain rather than just into the chain five space. It gives you a tighter join, especially when you're going to be joining more than one motif in the same place.
and then at the end of the round slip stitch to the first single crochet at the beginning of the round to join and fasten off and now we have a second motif joined with a one-sided join next i'm going to show you how we join along two sides but first i'm going to weave in my tail when joining along two sides, it still doesn't matter which corners and which side you want to join in. Just keep in mind that you have to have three corners and two sides not yet completed on your motif before you join it. Because we're going to be joining from this corner, this side, this corner, this side, and this corner. So as you can see here, I still have a corner, a corner, and a corner left to do. I've only completed one of the corners for this motif. So we'll going to replace those chain fives with chain five joints. So chain two, slip stitch, chain two, then continue on in our pattern until we get to our next chain five. Okay, we're ready to do another chain five, so it'll be chain two, slip stitch into the adjacent chain five space, chain two, and then continue back in our established pattern. Replace our chain five with chain two, slip stitch, this is that corner, so I'm going into that same center chain that I worked the other ones into, which is just a preference. You can do it that way. You can just do it in the chain space. It doesn't matter. I only suggest that you remain consistent throughout your project which, with whichever technique you choose. Okay, we've come to our next chain space. And I just want to show you where we're at now. So we worked, we joined in this corner, we joined in this side, we joined in this corner, and now we're ready to join in this motif's side. Chain two, slip stitch in the adjacent chain five, chain two, and continue on in our established pattern. Okay, we've come to another chain five, so it's chain two. Now let's see where we're at. We're going to slip stitch into this corner's chain five space, chain two, and then continue on in our established pattern to finish the round. And slip stitch to join, just like we did all the other motifs. And now we have a two-sided join. Once you know how to crochet square motifs and join them together like this, you can make any two-dimensional fabric, whether it's a bag, a shawl, a top, an afghan, sky's the limit. The one other thing that I want to show you is how you can manipulate this square into a triangle, because then you can actually do a lot more things with a fabric, including shaping in a garment or shaping in a fabric to get a straight edge when you work the diamonds in this formation. So let me show you that next. The motifs are formed on the diamond like this. If you're going to do the Madison crochet bag, I have that pattern linked in the video description. The motifs are worked on the diamond formation like this. There are also other reasons to do diamond formation versus the square formation, depending on what you're making and how you know and whether or not you have a way to manipulate the motifs. So let's say you wanted to do a shawl where you did it the diamond formation like this, and you would continue adding square motifs to get the size that you want. But let's say you wanted to do a triangular shawl where you wanted to get square edges on it. You're going to need to know how to make the motif into a triangle as well. Okay, here we go. We've got a bunch of square motifs joined together with the intention of making a triangular shawl, but the problem is we don't have a straight edge along the top. So anytime you can figure out how to make the half motif version of a square motif like this and make a triangle version of it, you could join it on two sided joints on either side here, here, and here and here to still get that triangle formation. So let me show you how to make one of these and then how to join them here as well. 
Okay, to make the triangle version of the square motif, we're going to start with the chain six still and slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. Only now we're going to work in rows, not rounds. Row one starts with a chain four, which counts as a double crochet chain one, then double crochet in the ring, yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, chain one, and double crochet in the ring. And you want to repeat chain one and double crochet in the ring until we have a total of nine double crochets and eight chain one spaces. This is what your work should look like at the end of row one. You should have nine double crochets and eight chain one spaces. Row two begins with slip stitching into the first chain one space, chain three, and two double crochet cluster to count as our first three double crochet cluster. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook in the chain one space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. The chain three and the two double crochet cluster count as the equivalent of our first three double crochet cluster. Our repeat for this row is chain three and three double crochet cluster in the next chain one space. Three double crochet cluster is yarn over your hook, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, insert your hook in the same space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all four loops on your hook. And we're going to repeat this all the way across. This is what your work should look like at the end of row two. You should have eight cluster stitches and seven chain three spaces. Row three begins with slip stitching into our first chain three space, chain eight, which counts as a double crochet chain five, and five double crochets in that same chain five, chain three space. Single crochet in the next chain three space, chain five. Single crochet in the next chain three space. Five double crochet, chain five, five double crochet in the next chain three space. Single crochet in the next chain three space, chain five. Single crochet in the next chain three space, and in the last chain three space, we'll work five double crochet, chain five, and one double crochet.
then you can fasten off if you are not joining the triangle version of this motif to any other motifs. Now, I did want to point out that before I show you how to join it, there is a one-sided join at the beginning of the triangle, then it's a two-sided join in the middle here, and then it's a one-sided join on the outside. So let me show you how to do the one-sided join first, and then I'll show you how to do the two-sided join. Okay, so to, in order to join on one side here with this motif, we're going to turn it so that we can have that side facing us. And remember, we started this final row with a chain eight that counted as a double crochet chain five. Well, we're still going to do that chain three for the double crochet portion, but for the chain five portion, portion, we're going to replace the chain five with a chain five join, which means chain two, slip stitch in the adjacent chain five space, chain two, and then come back to our working motif and work five more double crochets in that same chain three space single crochet in the next chain three space. Then instead of a chain five, it's a chain five join, which is chain two. Slip stitch to the adjacent chain five space, chain two, single crochet in the next chain three space. Then in the next chain three space work five double crochet, chain five join, five double crochet. Okay, let's set our work down now. So now that we've joined it on the one side only, we can now continue on without any more joining. So the rest of the row is just like we did in the first triangle motif, which was single crochet, chain five, single crochet, then five double crochet, chain five, one double crochet. And we can fasten this one off. And there we have a one-sided join triangle motif to make our beautiful straight edge along the top of this triangular shawl. Now I'll show you how to do the two-sided join in here. Okay, I have one of my triangle motifs worked through, round, through row two, and I've got my space here that I want to join it to, so I'm going to turn this around so it's facing me. Then get ready to start row three by slip stitching into the first chain three space. Chain three to count as my first double crochet, then a chain five join, which is chain two, slip stitch into the adjacent chain five space, chain two, and five double crochets in that same chain three space. Single crochet in the next chain three space, chain five join, which is chain two, slip stitch in the next chain five space on the adjacent motif, chain two, single crochet in the next chain three space, then work five double crochet, chain five join, and five double crochet in the next chain three space,
I've set my work down now so you can see where we're at. So we've joined along one side of this motif. Now we need to join along this side of this motif. So it'll be, we'll work in our established pattern going back to single crochet in the next chain three space. Chain five join. single crochet in the next chain three space. Then in the next chain three space, it's chain uh, five double crochets. Chain five join, chain two, slip stitch in the adjacent chain five space. chain two, and one double crochet in the same chain three space. And fasten off. So whether you want to make a square motif to just use one off as a decoration, embellishment, or a coaster or whatever, or join it as a fabric with one-sided joints or two-sided joints, sky's the limit. You can make bags, afghans, scarves, shawls, whatever. And when you turn those motifs on the diamond like this, sometimes having a triangular version of that square version opens up your possibilities even more for unlimited projects. Follow the link in the video description to get the pattern for the Madison crochet bag that will show you how to make this motif and join it to other motifs as you go.